Have you heard that all these new weight loss meds are making people waste away and lose all their muscle mass like an extra on The Walking Dead? But before we all start panic chugging protein shakes, let's talk about the science. I want to break down some more recent data from the Surmount 1 trial in terms of muscle loss and body composition changes. Oh, and if you want to keep getting more no BS science backed content, well you should probably smash that subscribe button and keep tuning in to all my videos. So the landmark Surmount Count 1 trial was a randomized controlled trial that was comparing tirzepatide, aka Zepbound, to placebo. And they were looking specifically at individuals that were struggling with obesity. Now, the study we're going to be dishing on today is a sub-study of the Surmount 1 trial that was done by Look and Friends. In this sub-study, Look and Friends took a small group of people from the main Surmount 1 trial, and with this small group of people, they measured their body composition before and after treatment with a DEXA scan. And at the present moment, the DEXA scan is kind of our gold standard when it comes to measuring body composition and body composition changes. Now, a quick question for you. Are you tired of the confusion and frustration that comes with weight loss? And are you looking for some real science-backed strategies that actually work? If so, then you should check out my Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. The Hub is your go-to resource for expert insights, live coaching, as well, you can stay up to date on all the latest and greatest that is happening in the GLP-1 medication space. Not only that, you're going to be joining a supportive community that deals with real talk, real support, and no judgment. So if you're ready to transform your health with expert insights, live check-ins, and an amazing group of people that just get it, you need to sign up for Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. The links and everything that you need are all down below. Check it out, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, now let's talk about the results. What they found for total weight loss is that the people that were on tirzepatide lost about 21.3% of their weight from baseline, and it was much less at 5.3% in the placebo group. When we look at the loss of fat mass in particular, those on tirzepatide lost 33.9% of their baseline, whereas those in the placebo lost 8.2% of their baseline. And of course, the marker that everybody is concerned about, how much lean mass was lost as you can see in this graph here, those that were on tirzepatide lost about 10.9% of their baseline lean mass, whereas those in the placebo group only lost about 2.6%. Now, all of that sounds pretty good. We lost less lean mass in comparison to fat mass. That's, you know, checking out. It's kind of what we want. But all those percentages and numbers, what does it exactly mean and what is everyone kind of freaking out and panicking about? To get a really good idea of what's actually happening in terms of fat mass versus lean mass loss, we need to look at the ratio between the two that was lost over the period of the study. And as you can see in this lovely little graph here where we compare it to Zepatide to the placebo, the proportion of fat mass versus lean mass loss was pretty much the same. So for every pound of weight that was lost in both groups, about 75 percent of that was from fat and 25 percent of it was from lean mass. Now I know some of you are maybe freaking out and saying oh my god that's 25 percent of lean mass loss like that's terrible that's awful but let's take a minute to take a big deep breath and realize that 25 percent loss of lean mass is totally normal. You see, whether you decide that it becomes a good idea to eat nothing but cauliflower crust pizza or go on tirzepatide, you're going to lose some amount of lean mass in the process. And on average, the amount of lean mass you're going to see lost is about 20 to 30%. So a loss of 25% lean mass in this study is perfectly normal. Now, one other thing that we need to talk about here is I've been talking about lean mass loss. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that lean mass does not directly equal muscle mass. Lean mass is a combination of muscle mass, bone, organs, connective tissues, etc., etc., and makes up a whole bunch of other things that aren't fat mass. And so when you go through the process of losing weight and we say that you're losing lean mass, it doesn't mean you're just purely losing muscle. You're losing a whole bunch of other things that comprise lean mass itself. But regardless, you're going to lose some amount of muscle mass because as you become smaller, your body just doesn't need as much muscle to carry around less weight. Now, of course, we do want to preserve as much lean muscle tissue as we possibly can because muscle tissue is extremely healthy for you. And losing too much muscle mass can be a problem. 
Having a lower muscle mass is going to equal a slower metabolism because muscle is your main metabolic engine. And so if you have a slower metabolism because of less muscle mass, well, it's going to be easier to regain weight. Less muscle mass is also going to mean less strength and doing some of the basic things in your everyday life can get harder and harder. As well, depending on your age, having less muscle mass can put you at a higher risk of things like falls and fractures, which I can guarantee you are not a good thing. So the million dollar question is with this data, do we need to be worried? Or more specifically, should you be worried? And I wish I could say the answer was cut and dry and simple, but of course it never is when it comes to science and health. And so it really is gonna depend on where you're starting at and what you're doing along your weight loss journey. But what I can tell you right out the gate is that if you're doing absolutely nothing to try and preserve as much lean muscle tissue as possible on your weight loss journey, well, yeah, you, you should definitely be worried. So how do we go about preserving and maintaining our lean muscle mass and not becoming frail AF? Well, the number one thing you need to do is you need to move. Some kind of movement, whether it's walking, running, lifting weights, I don't care, but we all desperately need to do a heck of a lot more of it. With your movement, you do want to work your way into doing some kind of resistance-based exercise. It doesn't have to be full-on lifting weights or anything, but doing something where you're putting a load on your body is going to help to maintain and strengthen that muscle that you do have. And so it could be things like a weighted vest or wearing a backpack that has some weights in it or getting some ankle weights. Doing different things like that kind of in your day to day can help you to put your body under load and ultimately help those muscles stick around. And again, just to reiterate things in case it wasn't clear, if you want a very quick and surefire way to an early grave, not doing any kind of movement is the way to do it. The second big thing that you need to focus on is protein. And what I can tell you is that whatever amount you're currently eating and you think it's good enough, you, you need to eat more. I can just guarantee that you're just not eating enough consistently enough every single day. And if you're not really sure how much protein to eat or what's gonna be the right amount for you, head down to the links down below and check out my fancy dandy TDEE calculator. It'll punch out on the final page of the calculation how much protein, how much calories you should be eating in order to preserve your muscle tissue. All right, my friends, we have touched on the core takeaways from this study as well as the fundamentals when it comes to preserving muscle tissue. But if you're craving a deeper dive looking at the fat mass versus lean mass loss between sexes age groups and those who lost a shit ton of weight and those who didn't, as well as some advanced tips on how you can preserve your lean muscle tissue, then you'll want to sign up to become one of the OG members of my YouTube channel in order to get access to the premium extended version of this video. The button to join is just down below, hit it, sign up, and you can get the extended access today. All right, let's bring this one into land here. What we can take away from this study and the results that we saw here is that the results were actually quite reassuring. The amount of lean mass loss that we saw was well within the normal expected ranges of things. We weren't seeing dramatic large amounts of muscle mass being lost in the 40 to 50% range of things because that would definitely be a big problem. That said, could these medications make muscle loss worse? And the answer is yes, absolutely. It is something that we need to keep in mind to keep monitoring and that sort of thing. But overall, when we're looking at the data from these studies, it's looking reassuring that the amount of lean mass loss isn't any greater than what we would normally see. But we do need to do what we can in order to preserve that lean muscle tissue. And that's gonna be eating more protein, doing the resistance training, getting more movement in, and not doing things like sitting on your butt, a crash diet, and so on and so forth. You wouldn't expect a carpenter to build you a house without any lumber. You can't expect your body to maintain and build more muscle tissue without the proper ingredients. Now, of course, I wanna hear from you. Are you currently on one of the anti-obesity medications and are you experiencing any kind of muscle loss? And what are you currently doing to maintain your muscle mass? Drop your comments and everything down below. I answer all of them the best that I can, but I love to hear from you guys and wanna start a conversation. That is it and that is all you beautiful people. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date on all of the no BS science back content that I create. As well, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. And of course, check out Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. It is your go-to resource for expert insights and a supportive community. Check it out, links and everything like that are down below. Sign up today and I can't wait to see you there. And as always, please remember, it is the small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.